Hi everyone, my name is JD Tadlock. I'm a co-manager at Trilogy Education over the tutoring department. I also do a little part-time mentoring, uh, helping out students. And I come from a 10-year background in development, so full stack PHP, JavaScript. So tonight, we'll be uh, going over, we're gonna be hitting uh, Context API. Um, but what's the reason, why do we reach out for something like Context API? And it all comes down to sharing states. So we have a situation we face when you start using React where you have a lot of components you start to build, and then you want to share some properties between those components. And at this point, you quickly realize um, that it gets pretty convoluted and frustrating to share a bunch of state between multiple components. And how might that look? So let's just say we have a parent component and that parent has a child component. So we want to pass down like a last name to the child so that child can use that property. But let's say the child has a component as well. So the child has a grandchild, right? And so that we have to pass that property down to the grandchild as well so it can use it. And this is fine with this single chain here, but let's say the grandchild needs to be able to update that last name property. So at this point, we're gonna to have to pass down like a handle change method down to the child which in turn the child passes it down to the grandchild. So then the grandchild can call that handle change method, pass a new value to it, which then calls the handle change method on the parent. And so then we get that property updated down the chain. And yeah, you're gonna quickly realize uh, that this gets a little bit crazy, right? We, we start to get, um, really frustrated with this like convoluted process of trying to share all the state between multiple components. So let's go over a quick uh, live code example of this. Um, so over here in uh, my code editor, I have a basic build of create react app. And then I've made a few components over here in my app component file or my app JS file. So I have this main component here, university, um, which has one property on its state of uni name, and then we have a handle change method. So in my JSX for the university, I'm including this class um, component, which is up here. So I'm simply passing a property of uni name with that university name property from our state above. I'm also passing a handle change method down to the child, right? All right, so the child can then use that university name property right here. Um, but then the child, the class um, has a student component. So the student component receives the university name property as well. And we also have to pass the handle change down because the student component needs to update that property. So in turn, we pass it down, then we are able to call that handle change through this input, which in turn calls this method on the university and it updates this property. So that's the basic kind of chain of events that we go through um, in a standard React kind of uh, process where we pass properties down to children components and then those children need to update it. And so we have to have this method handler to do that, All right? So <clears throat> moving on, let's, Let's talk about um, some things we reach out for. So at this point, when you're hit with all this sharing of state, you start looking for something, right? And most of the time when you start looking up something on Google, you might type in shared state Redux or React, and you'll find yourself hitting Redux very quickly, right? Um, Redux is very popular, so there's lots of uh, examples and tutorials and stuff out there on the web. Um, but let's go through a, a brief comparison um, with Redux and Context API. Um, Redux, what are the pros? Or what's, what's good about Redux? Um, well, it's not React specific. So it wasn't built specifically for React. So you can use it with other frameworks. Um, you can even use it with jQuery if you're um, so inclined to do that. Um, it's a... It has a huge community behind it. So there's, like I said, there's a lot of examples, tutorials out there um, to start learning Redux. Um, it's small in size, two kilobytes. So it's very, you know, very minimal. 
Um, that doesn't mean we're going to need some more stuff to make it work with React, but um, out of the box, it's a very small uh, tool package. Um, and it's great for large scale apps. So the modularity of, of Redux and, and the way it handles the whole process and design is really great for large scale applications. So what are some bad things about Redux, some cons that we could name here really quick? Uh, well, it requires additional packages to work with React. That's just a given. It wasn't designed or made specifically for React, so we need some additional packages to make that work. One in particular, um, and it can feel cumbersome if you're building a small little app. Um, it can really start to feel cumbersome, all the, the, the processes behind Redux and how it works. Uh, it can get really convoluted quickly. Um, and because of all that, we come down to the main important con and the reason that a lot of people give up on Redux. It's a, it, it has a large learning curve. So if you don't come from a background in programming, you haven't been around in programming very long with JavaScript, um, trying to figure out Redux can get really tough really quick, and a lot of people just give up. So let's go over a, a quick example of Redux. So I'm going to switch over here. I'm going to open my terminal, and we're going to switch to another branch. I'm going to run that. All right. And so we got it running over here. In our bootstrap file for our create react build, <clears throat> I pull in a couple of things from Redux. So we have the create store, which is gonna uh, make our store that we're gonna use on our app. I'm also pulling in an extra thing here, apply middleware, and that's gonna be used to add some extra functionality to Redux. Um, and then I pull the provider component from the React Redux package. So this is that extra package you need out of the box to get React and Redux working together. And then this thunk package I've pulled in is to give us the uh, a, um, asynchronous functionality for making asynchronous actions. I'll go over actions in, actions in just a second. But first, uh, let's go down to getting started with uh, Redux. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a initial kind of object of data for us to share. Um, these are kind of you use this to make your default values in your state. Um, and then we have a reducer. So a reducer is a callback function. And it receives two arguments out of the box. We have a uh, the state object. So this is this is received each time you update your state with Redux. It receives the the current state value. Initially, I'm setting it to our uh, our object up here. Um, and then the second argument is this action object. So the action object um, common practice is to have two properties on it: type and payload. So type would be what kind of, or what property in our state are we updating? So we tell it which one of those properties is gonna be updating. And then the payload on the action object would be that actual new value for that property in our state. All right, and uh, common practice as well is to use a switch to kind of determine which one's going to be changed. Um, and then we create a store variable. We call create store and pass our reducer callback into it. And then second argument here is optional, but we can pass in the apply middleware function and then pass some packages um, or a package to it to add some more functionality to Redux. So here I'm adding the ability to um, use uh, asynchronous actions. Um, so going up here, to the next step, which would be our actions. Actions are simply functions that return an object. That's the basic action. Um, here we're setting up some constants. Uh, these are just what type of action this is going to be. So it's just a simple string, um, but the constants are used to keep it um, fluid and con um, consistent across your app. Um, so we return this object and you can see, as I mentioned down below, we have two properties, a type and a payload. Um, that, that's the basic action. Um, then we also have this uh, asynchronous action here now. Through the thunk package, it gives us the ability to return a function from our function, and that function receives a dispatch function. So um, because of that, we can make asynchronous requests. So here I'm making a request to an API. 
Um, and then I'm updating, I'm calling other actions um, in this uh, action through our dispatch function. Um, and this allows us to use other actions asynchronously after some kind of request has been made. All right, so at this point, uh, we I come down here and we wrap our app component in the provider component. And then that provider component requires this one property store. And then we pass our store above that we created into that uh, provider. All right, let's go over here to our uh, app.js file. And like before, I have three components here, the main one being the university. So here with the university, uh, we call connect, which is imported above up here. I imported this from React Redux. I also imported two actions from our uh, index file, which I exported. And so down here we call connect, we pass in two arguments initially, and then it returns a function. And so the return function we pass in our component. And in turn, this is going to connect our component to our store. What are these two arguments right here? Well, we scroll up a little bit, we get the uh, map state to props callback. So this is a way of sharing properties from your state, certain properties um, with a component. So we can determine which properties from our state this component will receive, which is really nice to keep it, you know, uh, memory load low. Um, also, the second argument is the map dispatches to props. Here I'm doing it as an object. You can also do this as a function. The function would receive a dispatch function, and then you can call or you can set up a method and then uh, dispatch that action, some action you have um, with the dispatch function. All right. Uh, but here I'm doing the object syntax, which you can pass in an action to it, and then it will actually uh, uh, pass it through dispatch for you. All right, so up here, after we connect our component, we're able to access our properties from our global state through the props. Uh, we can also access our actions that we've um, attached through props. So here I'm calling get Joe, which in turn calls that asynchronous action. Um, but down here, I'm including the class component. And in the class component, I'm also connecting it. I'm telling it using map state to props here. I'm just doing this uh, straight into my connect here without creating a variable. But it's the same scenario. I'm sharing certain properties with the class component. And then we can use those in here. Um, and then we have a student component and the student component, the same kind of scenario. We pass a, uh, a, com or a function, a callback to share properties. And also I'm passing in an action, which allows me to change the university name by calling that action. All right. So that's uh, a basic kind of walkthrough of Redux. And at this point, I'm sure most of you, if you've gotten to this point or haven't gotten past this, you probably look something like this, right? Um, it is crazy. And I, for one, I've been there when I first started with Redux. I came from like Vue and Vuex. And so Redux just seemed really convoluted and messy to me. Um, so I understand the pain that we can face initially when we get hit with Redux, right? So <clears throat> what about Context API? What are some good things about it? Well, it's part of React. It's actually built into React. It's been there um, in a, a partial way for a while. And now it's uh, with the new updates, it's been uh, it's more usable for us um, in our app kind of concept. Um, and it's also like the learning curve for for Context API is pretty small. It's not uh, it's not too crazy to get up and running with it. Um, the community support is growing, although it's very small right now. It is growing rapidly um, since they released the update and, and it's gotten popular, very popular, very quickly. Um, and it's great for small, medium sized apps. You can really like, get some global state up and running super quick with Context API. Um, what are some cons? So the community, like I said, is growing rapidly, but it is small. So it's hard to find like examples, tutorials out there. There's not many out there right now. Um, it's just 
it's just one of the things we're going to face with something that's kind of new and, and hasn't really been around for a while. Um, so let's go over context API. And for this, I wanted to uh, really make it more clear for everyone. So because of that, I'm going to do a live code example. Um, and this is always risky, but uh, I just wanted to really make it clear for everyone. Um, and I think the live coding is the best way to go about that. So let me switch to a new branch. All right, I'm gonna run start here, get that up and running. Let's just make sure we don't have initial hairs or anything. All right, good. And so let's close this. Let's go to our index, our bootstrap file. Um, I haven't done anything in our bootstrap file. All right, so I'm gonna uh, pull in a couple of things from React. I need the component class to be able to create my own component, as well as the create context constructor from React. Down here, I'm gonna create a variable and call it context and set it equal to a new create context object. So this will give us an object and it has two properties, provider and uh, provider and consumer, right? Which we'll need to create our global store, right? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a class. So I'm gonna call this provider. And as you saw in the example with Redux, we had a provider component and it wrapped our component, our app component, and it provided the global store to our app, right? So this is the same kind of concept. Um, out of the box, create context, you can, you can use it without, you know, with some static values, but if you wanna be able to update those values, use reactive, uh, its, its power and its functionality, um, you have to, create a class, right? Because we need to be able to call set state and update state values. And so to get that real time functionality, we're gonna create our own class that kind of wraps everything. So in here, I'm going to output the context.provider component. And then I'm going to make sure that any children that pa get passed um, to this component are provided the global store. So down here, I'm going to take our app component. I'm gonna make sure that our provider wraps the app like so. And then for our provider component, it requires one property, which is value. So I'm gonna open this up. And then whatever we pass into this value prop is um, what our global state is going to be. Now we could just pass in a string, right? But this isn't gonna give us anything other than a simple string for our state. What we're really looking for is some kind of object of data, right? Object of properties. So let's create, let's go ahead and open up our state here and create an object. And I'm gonna create a property called union name like we did before. Set that to Georgia Tech. And then down here, I'm going to open an object. I'm gonna create a property called uniName and set that to this.state.uniName, right? So this object right here, we're passing, we're passing to value, is gonna be the object of data that we share with our app. All right, so at this point, if you're like me, you probably didn't read any more into the documentation. You just assume you could come over here to our app JS file, and I have a couple of basic uh, components set up here. Not really any any uh, or much code going on, but inside of our university, you might assume you could do something like this, like welcome to, and then we could say this dot props dot uni name, and you might be thinking that since you know we've shared this object with our app, that we now have this uni name property on our app component, our university component, right? And if we say this and I come back over, you're gonna see something like this, right? Welcome to, and then nothing because that uni name property is actually not attached to props. So how does it work? How do we get 
properties and context API from our global uh, state. We need one more thing, and that's the consumer. So I'm gonna create, I'm gonna export a constant. I'm gonna call this consumer. Set it equal to context.consumer, all right? So now, since this is being exported, I can pull it in over here. So I'm gonna import this, import consumer from, and we'll import it from the index file. And down, down here, I'm going to instead take this H1 out and I'm going to output the consumer component like so. And then you might assume you could do something like this. So I'm gonna save this and come back over and we're gonna see an error. It's gonna say render is not a function. So what this means is uh, consumer takes a render prop um, and if you've ever used a render prop before, it's uh, it usually is something we use for like routing and stuff like that, where we want to logically determine which kind of app or which kind of component is shown on a route. Um, but in this case, the consumer component actually takes a render callback as a child. So instead of HTML or JSX, we're going to pass in a callback function as the child like this. And then in the callback function, I can finally output my H1. But in this H1, the uh, this.props is not what we need here. So this context uh, parameter here that I named is referring to this object of data right here. So whatever object of data you're sharing or whatever data you're sharing in general right here, is now going to be attached to this context value right here. So this is our object of values, our properties. So now I'd say context.uniName and save this, come back over and now we see uh, welcome to Georgia Tech. So it's working, we have the ability to access our properties from our global state through our consumer. Um, the next thing is like, what if we wanna update this value? So let's go back over to our uh, index file or provider component. Let's create a handle change method. This is gonna receive an event from like an input. And then like usual, you might do something like this where we say e.target.name and set whatever uh, input is uh, being typed into. We wanna set that and use the e.target.value to update the value in the state, right? So down here, I'm going to create a new property. I'm gonna call it handle change. And I'm gonna set that to this.handle change. So now since I've added a new property to our global state object, I can actually come back over here to the app component or to the university component. And we can create an input. Let's make sure we have a name which is uniname, so that references the correct property in our state. Let's set the value to context.uniName, and let's do on change and call context.handle change. All right, so uh, we also need to make sure we wrap this in a fragment as well because we can't, we don't, can only have one parent element like so. If I save this and come back over, we can now, or should be able to, yep, we can type into the input and update that value as we type. So, all right, that's cool. Um, what about asynchronous request? So if I come back over, here to our provider. So I'm gonna create a get joke method. And this is gonna be an asynchronous method. So we're gonna do this. And in here, I'm gonna create a constant, call it res and set that equal to uh, fetch. Come over here to uh, Google and we're gonna to go to a Chuck Norris API here. We're gonna grab this uh, API URL paste that in. Let's also make sure that we await this since this is asynchronous. And then I'm going to pull the value property 
and then the joke from the response.json. Let's call get list.set state, and we're going to update the joke in our state with the joke from the API request. <clears throat> Uh, oops. Equals. There we go. Let's come up here and let's uh, add a joke property to our state. And then down here, let's add joke to our global state object. And this is going to be this dot set state or this dot state dot joke. And we also need to make sure we add the get joke method. So this dot get joke, save this, come back over. And then in our university component, you might be like me and you assume you could do something like this component did mount and we could call this dot props dot get joke. And this would just work. But of course, once again, we see that get joke is not attached to props. Um, it's uh, actually limited or confined to the context object down here. And at this point, a lot of people out there um, hit this and they say, wait, context API is really limited. I'm stuck inside of this consumer, inside of this callback to make any kind of asynchronous or kind of calls when my component might load or something like that. And I'm going to show you how to, how to uh, expand this and make context API way more usable in a minute. But for right now, let's just make this work. So I'm going to create a paragraph. And then this paragraph, I'm going to dangerously set HTML. I don't recommend doing this, but for tonight, it's no big deal. Um, and then I'm going to set that to context.joke. And then down here, let's assume we have like a button. And we're going to say get joke. And when we click on this button, we're going to call context.getJoke. And if I save this, let's actually comment this out as well. Come back over, hit get joke, and there we go. We see our joke. I can click this over and over again, and it works. But as you notice, like when we first load the page, we can't see the joke being loaded because uh, we have no way right now. And we could come in here, create a standard function, and call the method from inside of our context callback. Um, but that's not that's not good, right? That's not something we really want to do. Um, but before we move on to like making it more usable, uh, you can now see that if I come up here to our student component and I pop in the consumer, I can then open a callback and I can uh, do something like this. Uh, I attend a boot camp at context.uni name. Save that or come back down here. Let's add our student component down here. Save this and come back over. And you can see that it does let us use the property from our global state in the student component. So I'm not passing anything down to the student through my university, um, but I have access to it through the consumer. So here we are, we're at this point where we, we can use Context API to share data across our app, but how do we make it more, uh, more functional, more usable? Um, so let me show you a couple of techniques for that. So uh, the, main, the first thing I'm gonna do is down here, I'm gonna create a function. I'm gonna export it and I'm gonna call it connect store. So sort of like how Redux has a connect our React Redux has a connect uh, function. We're going to create one too. And what is this function going to be? Well, in React, it's called a higher order component. So a higher order component is a function that returns a component. And you might be thinking like, why would you do that? Well, it gives us a huge amount of power over what we can do or we can give to a component. So let's say we pass in a component to this function. So let's say dependent component. So we're going to pass in a dependent component and this dependent component is going to be uh, dependent upon our consumer, our consumer data, our global object from right here, right? We need that. 
we need this component to be able to have all of those properties. So let's uh, return a new component. So I'm going to say class extends component. We don't need a name since we're just returning the direct uh, component here. And we're going to do render and return. And in this return, I'm going to output a consumer, right? And then in the consumer, we're going to do the same thing where we have a callback function. But in our callback function, I'm not going to output anything other than our dependent component right here. And now, since we have our dependent component wrapped inside of our consumer, I can open up some curly braces and just spread or populate all the properties from our context object into the props on our dependent component. So we're creating a whole bunch of props, whatever values from our object here, they're all gonna become props on our dependent component. So I hope this is starting to make sense to you how we're going to use this. So if I save this, come back over to our app.js file, let's instead of consumer, let's pull in connect store. All right. So then uh, down here, let's for right now, let's comment this out. And I'm going to come down here to our HTML and I'm going to grab all this, pull it out and pop it right up here. Like so, and then down here for our university component, I'm simply going to call connect store and just pass our university into our connect store function. <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, we come back over here and you can see it's going to be passed in right here. It's going to be wrapped by our consumer and then our context, all of our properties are going to be spread to that dependent component. So at this point, instead of context up here, we can do this. We can say this dot props. And if we come back over, save this, you can see that it works the same exact way. But now we're, we're starting to see that familiar concept, the design of passing our global stuff to our props instead, right? So it sort of looks like Redux if you've already used Redux before. And this makes more sense to us. And you can see it's a whole lot cleaner. I don't have that consumer and then a callback inside of the consumer. So it really cleans up our code just with this simple state or simple step of the uh, higher order component. And also check this out. If I do component did mount and I call our get joke method, it now works. We have it attached to our prop so I can simply call it when our component loads. And that's a huge step up in our functionality for our app, just doing that. All right, so what's the next thing? Well, what if we want to get modular with our, our uh, kind of setup here? So right now, our, all of our store code is, uh, is nested in our bootstrap file for React, and that's not good. So let's go ahead and quickly separate this. Um, so I'm going to grab all of this code down to my connect store function. I'm going to create a new folder, call it store. And inside of that, I'm going to create a new file, index.js, and we're going to paste all this in. And then let's make sure we pull in React as well as component and create context from React. And then down here, I'm going to export my provider com uh, component. I'm going to save this and come back over to our bootstrap file. And let's import the provider from uh, the store folder. Up here, I don't need this anymore. Take this away. And now if I save this, we should come back over and we get one more error, which is in our app.js file up here. I don't, I no longer am pulling this from the index file. I'm pulling this from the store index file. So if I save that, we see it works just fine. Um, also, I could, I no longer need to export my consumer up here. Just save that like that. 
works just fine, right? Because now we have our connect store uh, function that we can call and wrap any component. Uh, and that's good. So getting back over here, what if, uh, or getting to our store, like what if we want to separate our actions? So when I look at my methods up here, when I'm thinking of a global state management or global store, right? I think of these as like actions, right? Some way of updating values in our state. So let's take our actions here and let's separate them. Let's create a new file called main actions.js. Let's paste these in. Of course, we need to change this syntax a little bit. Let's export this as a function instead. Down here as well. This one's going to be an async function. So the actual syntax is async function. And then look like this. All right, so we save that. Over here in our back to our index, let's import everything as main actions from main actions. So this is gonna give us an object, and that object is going to have every single one of these functions as a property of that object, so a method of that object. So now I have an object of all the methods, all of our actions, right? So down here in our provider, let's create a new method called attach methods. And this attach method is going to receive a data object, right? And what I want to do is I want to return an object of all of our methods, right? And they should be bound to the provider. So I need to somehow take all these methods from this object and bind them to our provider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some JavaScript, and this is a little more advanced, but um, just follow along, and you can play with this later on um, and, uh, and figure out what I'm doing here. It's not too crazy. I'm going to call object.keys and pass in our data object, which is going to be our main actions in a second. And this gives me an array of all the properties from our data object. So now since I have an array, I can call reduce. And reduce takes two arguments. The first one is a callback. So let's do a callback. And the second one is the initial data value that you want to start with and end with, right? So in the end, I want to have an object. So I'm going to initially start with an empty object here. And I'm going to uh, basically give this empty objects and properties along the way here. So as we iterate through our array of properties, reduce is gonna call this callback each time it iterates. And each time it goes over each property in this array, um, we're going to get two things here in our callback. The first one is the object that we have right here. So we get our initial object and we get its value, its current value every time this callback is fired. The second, um, argument we're going to receive is the prop. So the current prop, our current property in our data object, okay? So in here I'm going to say object and then dynamically set a property on that object and set it equal to the data object and then the current method in the data object. And make sure as we go through each one we bind it to the parent component or the provider up here, right? And then you also want to make sure that you return the current value of your um, result or your output in the end. So this is the result or this is going to be the finishing output, right? As we populate this object with properties, which are all methods that are bound to the provider, we return that object each time this iterates, right? So in the end, we're gonna get an object of all those methods and they're gonna be bound to our provider. So down here, instead of doing this, I can now just spread the function call and just pass in main actions 
like so. And this is going to give us all those methods and they're all going to be bound to our provider. Also, we're doing this thing where we have our state values and then we're also creating them down here in our object. So a little shorthand for that would be just spread this dot state. So now all of these properties up here are going to be spread through our global object as well. And if we save this and come back over, we should, oh, this.props.joke is not a function. So let's see, object. I'm not returning this. So I need to return that and there we go. So now it works. Um, great. So at this point we've separated our methods and we've separated our uh, properties and our state. Uh, we're getting pretty modular here and our code has cleaned up quite a bit. Um, and now I can quickly add values to our state. Like let's add something like BG, save this and come over here to our app.js file. And let's say we have uh, owner H1, we set the style of the H1, we pass in an object, and we're gonna be setting the background color to this.props.bg. All right, and then up here, we're gonna have an input on our student component. So let me go ahead and just copy our input from down here, pop it in up here. And let's change a couple of things. This is gonna be BG, right? And now if I save this, come back over. <clears throat> oh, let's make sure we connect our uh, student component. So remember how we have to call connect store and pass our component into connect store. Let's take our student callback here and pass it into connect store like that. Uh, and this would not be this.props now, this would be just props. Save this, come back over, and now I should be able to type something like blue. And in real time, I can update the background of our H1 in our uh, university component. So we're sharing state between all these components now very easily through our connect store function. Um, we have some modularity to our code separating our actions, separating our state values. So that's uh, it for this example and walkthrough tonight. I hope this helps you. Um, you know, feel free to reach out and ask me any questions if you have any about the, the example tonight, the walkthrough, and I can, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and until next time, um, good luck and have fun with Context API. And I hope you build some awesome and amazing apps with it.